The Torah tells us in the beginning of Parshas Chai Yisara, by Yavo Avraham Lispod Lasara Blivkosa. Avraham is grieving for the death of his wife Sarah, his beloved wife, and he needs to find a place to bury her. So he looks in the area of Hebron and he finds a parcel of land and he says to himself, This looks perfect. And he asks the people who lived in Hebron at that time, Who owns this piece of land? They're told, he is told that Ephron Hachiti, Ephron the Hittite, is the person who owns a piece of land, and Avram begins to engage in a conversation with Ephron in order to purchase the land from him, to become the Aras HaMachpela, the place in which Avraham and, of course, all of our Avos and Imahos, with the exception of Rachel Imenu, would eventually be buried. Within this conversation, at the beginning, Ephron appears to be offering Avram a gift. At the end of the conversation, Avram pays in cash, and he made sure that it was very, very clear. He pays for the ma'ara, he pays for the field, and for the cave. What happened? Why did Avram not just simply take the gift? Why did he insist on paying? So Simcharaz explains to us that Avram saw something in the behavior of Ephron that was alarming to him, and therefore he decided not to accept the gift and insisted on paying. What was it that he saw? Rashi explains that Ephron was not a man of uh, great respect in the community. People didn't really know of him. He wasn't of great significance until the day that Avram came looking for him. All of a sudden, Avram's looking for Ephron. Ephron becomes a respected, distinguished member of the community. Why? Well, Avram was known as the Nesi Elohim. Avram was known as the Prince of God. He was the one who connected the world with monotheism. Avraham had so many miracles performed for him that people had heard in the small world at the time, had heard of the greatness of Avraham and connected him to the greater power, to the divine, and understood that Avraham represented that which HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted in, 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 in perfecting and improving the world. So Avraham became this distinguished person, and since Avraham was looking for Ephron, as a byproduct, Ephron became distinguished and respected on that very day. So Ephron says to Avraham, you want this piece of land, I insist, here, take it. So initially, Avraham seems to say, thank you very much. But something happens. And what happened, as explains of Raz, is as follows. Avraham noticed that Ephron kept on insisting to him and telling him how great of a chesed he was doing for him by giving him the land. He said, I'm giving you the land. I'm giving you the land. And he said a number of times. And Avraham wondered to himself, how sincere is Ephron if he needed to insist that he's giving me the land, I heard it once. Why did I need to hear it a number of times? It must be that Ephron is really not sincere, and he didn't really want to give me the land as a gift. Because Avraham reasoned in his mind, according to Rav Raz, that when a person gives a gift, they don't tell the person who they're giving the gift to how valuable the gift is. If I receive a gift from someone, and I open up the gift, and I say, my goodness, I can't believe they bought this for me. It's beautiful. It's just so valuable. But a person doesn't give a gift to someone else and say, here, I want you to have this, and I want you to know how much money I spent on it and how valuable it is. Because if a person is doing that, then they're really not giving from the sincerity of their heart and that they care, but they're doing so for altruistic reasons. And that's what Avram saw with Ephron. He saw that there was a lack of sincerity, that Ephron only wanted the fame, and he didn't want to be sincerely to give Avram a gift from the bottom of his heart. That's a lesson I believe is important for us in life, in that Avraham paid for the Ma'ara and paid for it because he saw these Midos, the character trait of Ephron, which was lacking, and there was a lack of sincerity of giving. When it comes to our own personal lives, we live in a world where people are putting their names on the internet, uh, talking about how great they and their families are, and there is a lack of tzniyus, a lack of modesty, not, not in, the, in the physical sense, but a lack of modesty in the way in which we carry ourselves that really is perpetual in our lifetime because of the advent of social media and the world around us. If a person really wants to be sincere in their actions, then they live a life of tzniyus, of modesty. If one performs an act of chesed, yes, of course, we hope that the act of chesed makes a rosha, makes an impact on ourselves, but there really is no need to tell anyone else about how great are the acts of chesed that we do. Rather, just do and let HaKadosh Baruch Hu see what we're doing. And let it change us and improve us, but not to show other people that we're doing it, because if we do so, then it really shows the lack of sincerity on our part. 
That's a lesson that we learn from Avram Avinu, and a lesson I believe is very pertinent in our lives. May we be zocha to learn from it. Thank you for listening, and have a good Shabbos.